Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I am a busy bee this evening. Sometimes I make up, sometimes I have something to say, sometimes I don't. Anyway, if it's the first time you're passing through, you'll get used to me and all my different kinds of topics. And I just want to thank you for stopping by and checking out my website. If you like what you hear, you're welcome to subscribe, share, like. And for my returning subscribers, I hope I keep you interested. OK, now we are talking about this deportation um, situation, which is happening next week. Um, the protesters have not been able to stop the flight. I just want to show you what um, Boris Johnson is saying. But basically, there was one person that um, escaped deportation or will escape deportation under the joint enterprise rule, which is now unlawful. I'll tell you a bit about that in a minute. So, what's the, why is it not really talking now? Typical, isn't it? It's been two years since the Windrush scandal exposed the wrongful detention and deportation of Commonwealth citizens. While we wait for the much delayed publication of the Lessons Learned review, the government plans to deport 50 people, 50 people to Jamaica by charter flight next week. Will the, will the Prime Minister immediately suspend the flight until the Lessons Learned review is published and the recommendations in? Mr. Speaker, I think the whole House will understand that the people of this country will think it right to send back foreign national offenders. Point for the job, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, the Home Office press team told journalists that everybody on the deportation flight to Jamaica are serious criminals. Mr. Speaker, this seems not to be true. I've got a constituent of mine, as the Honourable Member not from the East has said, they haven't even had the report. And I've got the wife of a constituent of mine who has said that he is due to be deported in just six days' time. He was convicted under the now unlawful joint enterprise rule. He was released under two, after, after two months. And his wife feels that this stress is going to kill her husband because he has a heart problem. Mr Speaker, how can I get the Home Secretary to take this seriously and be truthful about the people who are on the flight, the deportation flight, and if we can halt this flight until we establish the true facts of the situation? Can I thank your old lady for giving me notice of her question? And the point of order she's raised. What I want to say is she knows it's not a point of order for me personally. But of course I think the whole point has sympathy in which what she said. And I'm sure the front bench opposite the government front bench has heard what said. <sighs> so, um, yeah, for those who do not know what the joint enterprise rule is, it was a situation where if um, you were with somebody who dealt a fatal blow, um, like if some, you saw somebody stab someone or you saw somebody shoot someone and even though you didn't do it yourself and you weren't involved in it, you could actually get the same sentence as the person who did it and they call it the joint enterprise rule. They also extended that to gang-related crimes claiming that um, people who were in gangs, they could actually... Um, know in advance that their whoever their gang members were going to kill someone even even the, even if they weren't even around but by the fact that they were affiliated with the gang or associated with the gang they then became liable for somebody else's crime and we have two men i'm going to put the link or boys i have to say who are doing life sentences under this joint enterprise rule because they, because the, one of their gang members killed somebody, stabbed them. So um, apparently it's unlawful now, and that is what that lady in that um, in the House of Commons was referring to when she was saying that there's somebody on the flight who hadn't done a crime himself, but was actually under the joint enterprise rules, which meant that he might have seen the crime. Or he may not have seen the crime, but he was associated with the person doing the crime. Now, it looks like it is going to go ahead next week. Um, there's little anyone can do about it now because tonight they had a protest on um, Tuesday and they also had one last night. And 
um, I don't believe there's been any change, um, which means there's going to be um, a lot of people, well, the plane is headed for Jamaica. Now, if they are foreign um, criminal offenders, then, yeah, they are eligible for deportation. Any foreign criminal offender, providing they have done four years in prison, they are eligible... Providing they've done four years in prison, they will be eligible for deportation after their sentence. But what people are concerned about is the crimes that they are saying the people on the plane have committed. And there's no one to back them. They've got no legal representation. And so there's, they're not convinced that the people who are being deported are being deported legally. And that is the concern. And they're talking about lessons learned from Windrush. Like I said in a previous video, they don't care about the people who from the Windrush. They don't care if people are being deported illegally. They just need to know that they're getting rid of people. And the, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say now, because what can you say? There's no one to prove it. There's, And I mean, any time you... People who are in detention centres need um, need legal um, counsel, and a lot of them they can't afford it. So who have they got to help them? Who have they got? The only people who get off or who are not deported are people who've got enough money to get lawyers, immigration lawyers, and good ones who care. Otherwise, they get shipped off, and like. And like she said, a lot of those people are being deported have been in the UK since they were children. And I don't know what crime they've committed. And the thing is, like I said, if they have committed a crime, then yes, they are going to be deported. They may not have known that before they committed a crime, but that's not. That's their, you know, they've made their bed. But it's those people who have only might have done six months or a year or who may not have done who are not serious criminal offenders and they're still being deported. That's that's the um that's the sad bit. Um what else did I say? I think I've said that about the joint enterprise. I think you've got an understanding of what that means. Um joint enterprise is where someone can be convicted of murder even if they did not inflict the fatal blow. However, it has unlawfully been used in gang related offences if defendants could have foreseen violent acts by their associates. And the thing is with the the two boys that were in prison, one of them said he wasn't even in the house. So how could he foresee what that person was going to do? But what the police are saying is that by virtue of them knowing that what type of person they're associated with, they can more or less envisage that that is what that is the outcome that somebody's going to die. So, um, yeah, it's not great news, is it? But that's all I've got to say, really. And I think I better stop it now because I've got Love Island. I've got to watch, and I? And then that'll be a lighter side after all this doom and gloom. So have a good evening, people. Bye-bye.